Before I start this video, let me take 30 seconds to tell you something about Exergic. Exergic is India's most trusted and most experienced institute for online gate preparation. I am Chandresh Mahajan, founder and chief educator at Exergic. I am an All India Rank 37 in gate mechanical engineering, an ex Indian oil officer having 7 plus years of teaching experience as of now. These are the GATE 2021 Mechanical Engineering Toppers from Exergic. You can find their preparation strategy on Exergic's website. To know more about our GATE courses, you can visit our website or contact us on these details. Also, you can download Exergic GATE preparation app from Google Play Store. The link is available in the description of video. Have a look at this question, this interesting question from GATE 2022 Mechanical Engineering. And this is such a question which is answered incorrectly by almost everyone. Even when I was given this question based upon the memory, where actual diagram was not there, diagram and language was not there. Obviously, anyone can pass this question off by considering this question to be a normal question and think that yes, everything is right. GH is going to be the zero force member. Let's move ahead. But this is not that question. This question requires separate analysis, separate mind space where you can sit in, with a relaxed mind and then you look at the question. Then you will get the question, right? Obviously, when such questions are solved on memory basis and there is a hurry to solve them as early as possible, definitely anyone can do mistakes in these questions. Almost everyone, aspirants as well as institutes, did mistake, same mistake in this question. So let me talk about this question in detail and let me uh, tell you what answers are going to be the correct for this question. So if you look at the question, the lengths of member BC and CE in the frame shown in the figure are equal. So length of member BC, this and CE, they are equal in length. All the members are rigid and lightweight. What does that mean? They are rigid means bending or any sort of uh, change of dimensions we don't have to consider change of length change of dimension and they are lightweight means you don't have to consider any self weight of any of the members friction at the joints is also negligible these are the joints where no friction force is going to act right so that's not going to affect our free body diagram two forces of magnitude q greater than zero this one and this one are applied as shown all right means two forces basically they are acting as they have been shown each at mid length of respective member. So this is also at mid length at the center of CE. This is also at the mid length center of DC which uh, on which it acts. Which one or more of the following members do not carry any load or force. So out of these members which of them are not going to have any uh, load or force. So basically what question is asking us it is asking us zero force members zero force members and now question gave you four options one of the option was cd one option was gh one option was ab i think and one op option was ef options doesn't matter here i'm just going to discuss what is going to be the answer in absolute members term that gh is there cd is there ef is there which one of them are zero force members so we are not going to look at the options here okay now let us try and discuss the very first point of the question that here as you can see clearly that the load which is acting that load is not acting at the joint in the truss members the load acts at the joint as we have already discussed right when load does not act at the joint and it acts like this in such a way that it is transverse to members right not along transfers to the members so such fall in the category of frames right. And as we have discussed that frame for such frames, we need to analyze it only. We need to break down the force and bring the forces at the joints. Only then we can analyze by analyze them and analyze them by the methods that we use, no? method of joint sections and all. So that is the first step to be done in this question. Now, those who are going to skip that step, maybe to solve early, to solve fast. When you want to solve fast, you tend to skip some of the steps, right? And that's when error is possible, right? And that error almost everyone did 
uh, in, in this specific question. So let's not solve fast. Let's not solve this question fast because that will get us to wrong answer and that will confuse some of the students as well. Let's take our time and discuss this problem with slow speed. So if we have load Q at the center, we need to distribute this force at C and at E, right? At these two points as we already know because it is not a truss, it is a frame. So if we do that, let's come to this diagram here. If we do that, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? This is C, this is E, this is load Q acting. So it's just like any beam that we have and Q by 2, Q by 2 will be coming at both the ends. Here also, here also, right? This is the free body diagram of CE. Please note CE, where Q is acting in the upward direction. But if I ask you, tell me how the free body diagram will look like for the joint C or we have pin na? at C we have some pins which are used to uh, you know keep them together so if I only want to draw the free body diagram of that pin or of that joint then there this Q by 2 will be acting in the opposite direction correct basic concept again since this concept we discussed since the very beginning of engineering mechanics that if we have a setup like this and here Q by 2 is acting in the upward direction and if there is a pin here then on that pin it will act in the downward direction right Newton's third law equal and opposite forces act on different bodies correct so this is the case here Q by 2 here in the downward direction but here in the upward so for the pin Q by 2 acting in the downward direction same will be happening for pin E also for pin E also Q by 2 will be acting in the downward direction right similarly if you look at this Q here for this Q also, if you draw this beam BC, again BC is a beam, although it is looking vertical to you, but it is just like any other beam. So here we have Q, here we have Q by 2, here also we have Q by 2, correct? The very first thing that we need to do in this question is remove this Q and distribute it as Q by 2, Q by 2 at C and E. This is a step which if not done, will give us the wrong answer that's one of the error rather i will call it the major error that almost everyone did that they forgot to actually write q by 2 here and q by 2 here if you do that question becomes i won't say direct but it can prevent your mistake right if you look at this question directly by considering q to be at the center even though you know that yes q by 2 and q by 2 will get distributed but if you are not drawing the free body diagram by showing q by 2 here and q by 2 here you are bound to make mistake in this question there are many types of mistakes possible i will tell you all of them so if q is acting here actually we have to show it like this that this q we have distributed like this q by 2 here and q by 2 here all right please note i am drawing the force on the joint not on the pin it is as good as applying Q by 2 and Q by 2 here. If I choose to apply Q here, I can replace that, break that into Q by 2 and Q by 2 like this. Correct? That's what we have done here. Similarly, if Q is acting here, I will be distributing that, I will be dividing that like this. Q by 2 here and Q by 2 here. Please note, this is just as good as any external loading acting. Please consider that this is the diagram now given to you in the question. Where Q is not there. Rather you have Q by 2, Q by 2, Q by 2, Q by 2. External loads acting. Consider this as the free body diagram now. If we try to do that part in our head, in our mind. That yes we know Q is going to get distributed. Let's not focus on that and let's just solve the question then there will be mistakes one of the zero force member will be missed one of the zero force member will be missed if we do not do this step on pen and paper and we just try to do it in our head okay so here this is the case in front of us now. and before discussing it further i just thought to write the options here and tell you one twist in the question that it is a msq question one more factor one more point if you missed in this question you might solve this question incorrectly because this if anyone asks you and tells you that this is an MCQ question what you will do you will not think much about any other joint and you will directly come to GH and you will take it if people tell you that this is an MCQ question many of you will not even think much and you will directly come 
and conclude that GH is zero, D is the option, right? But in this question, it's an MC, MSQ question. So there are possibilities of other options being true. Secondly, GH also in this case becomes zero, but not by the method that we know, by a different concept, by a different logic. Let me also tell you that. Look, we all know, we all have covered that if we have one, two and three members like this connecting at a point, this is member one, this is member two, this is member three, all three different members connecting at a point like this in a truss, then force in this one will be zero. That's something that we have already discussed and proved, correct? You can do the same summation fx is equal to zero, summation fy is equal to zero and you will be able to easily conclude that, okay? So from that logic that almost all of us know gh is going to be zero, but in this question, in this diagram, we are not going to apply this logic. GH is not going to be zero by that logic. Why? Because there is a slot here and this can actually slide in the slot. That's what it looks like, right? Actually, it cannot slide because it can at from H, it is at a certain distance. It can rotate like this only. It cannot move here or there. But the point here is, let me rather draw a slightly bigger diagram of that part of this part and then show you suppose this is the slot okay i am drawing a very large diagram here of this slot this is the pin here right this is point g this pin is this one and this slot only upper part i have shown like this okay now a very basic concept that we discuss a lot of times in different subjects in mechanics in theory of machines, in strength of materials, even in fluid mechanics in some topics. Machine design definitely, definitely in machine design. That when there are two surfaces in contact and force needed to be transmitted from one surface to the another, I am talking about the force that can push it, it needs to be transmitted along the perpendicular direction like this. Right? I am not talking about the rubbing force here. I am not talking about the sliding force here. I am talking about the force that needs to be transmitted in order to uh, pass the force or relieve the burden of force. In this case, this is a slider kind of setup, right? A, a slot where this is supposed to slide, correct? The force transmission in this direction, in this direction, if I talk about force trans transmission in BE, it will be in this direction, rather in this direction, right? Let me again show the bigger diagram like this. This is the link. The shaded part that I am showing you is the actual link BE and the gap, this is the gap, this is the slot, right? This is shaded part is the actual link. Actual link means this part. Got it? Now whenever, listen to me carefully, whenever force will be transmitted on the link BE, it will be transmitted in which direction? In this direction. Why? Because any force on B, if I draw the free body diagram for joint B, the force in BE will be in this direction, correct? Similarly, if I draw the free body diagram of E, the force in BE again from that point will be in this direction, right? So force obviously is going to get transmitted from B to here because loading is here at these ends, right? At B actually. So load or force is going to be transmitted from B in this direction or from E in this direction, right? That direction is along the direction of slot, along the direction of slot. Whatever force you are transmitting, you are transmitting it in that direction or in this direction along the slot. So there is no force that is going to get transmitted perpendicular to the slot. This movement, this movement, actual there is no movement as we already know everything is rigid and fixed. I am just trying to give you an intuition, intuition I am giving you. That if there is any force acting along BE, that force is not going to get transmitted perpendicular to BE. That force is not going to get transmitted in this direction to the pin this is the pin this pin cannot receive any force due to the force being transmitted in this link in this slot and since this cannot receive any force in that direction hence there will be no horizontal component of that force no horizontal component of that force that is why gh has zero force that is why gh is a zero force member it is not a zero force member because of the concept that we know specifically in truss that if there are three members coming together here, then whatever is the force being transmitted here, same force will be, same force will be transmitted here, 
they are collinear and this cannot have any force otherwise the force equilibrium will disturb right that's not the concept here the concept here the concept here is this one that we have discussed that due to the presence of pin and slot there is no possibility of any force component perpendicular to this direction and that is why since there is no force being transmitted from BE to the pin at G so the pin has to remain force free obviously from the right side there is no force acting right so pin is force free means GH is force free that is the reason reason why GH is a zero force member so again many of the students I'm sure take the GH and that is correct GH is one of the options GH is one of the options but the reason why GH is a zero force member that I think many of you would not have paid attention to so this is the reason why GH is a zero force member coming to the question MSQ what about other options it's not an MCQ if this was MCQ we could have moved to the next question without bothering much about the other options because when you see the question of trust obviously there are going to be different names written right it's not like those conceptual question uh, where a option says something else b option says something else so you have to read and understand it that's not how this question works right if you have got the answer you solved it you can clearly see gh is zero force member you think it's mcq you will tick you will what will you do by reading all the options you will move to the next question that will be a mistake because it is msq other options are a possibility now let us see what can happen with the other option let's use okay let's use the same diagram here what can be done about the other options is there a possibility of any other zero force member let us see that as i told you if we try to conclude that in a hurry due to whatever reasons there will be error in the answer and one zero force member may get missed let me tell you how so what I have done that in this diagram I have cleared the Q load which I cleared here also but since it was looking so it was not very pleasing to the eyes. So I have removed this and as I told you we have shifted that as Q by 2, Q by 2 at C, E and B. So that is what I have shown here right and here we know this does not exist this GH does not exist rather let me also remove GH also how much I can remove it. This GH also is going to be a non-existent link because from the point of view of force it's not going to contribute or distribute anything. Now in this situation you have a setup which looks like a symmetric loading. A setup which looks like a symmetric loading to you. At this point you can get a slight idea, slight idea, not proper idea. That CD looks unsymmetric here. Some of you may think that sir how symmetric this is not symmetric but I am asking you that consider this as the line of symmetry and now you look at the loading just tilt your, tilt your head at 45 degrees like this and then look at this. This and this are equal in lengths. Loading Q by 2, Q by 2, Q by 2, Q by 2 symmetric. Connections symmetric. Everything is symmetric only this CD does not look symmetric because we don't have any connection here like this right please note I am talking about this not the horizontal or vertical symmetry but symmetry about this axis right so this may give you some inspiration that maybe CD also is a zero force member right although we have not conceptually concluded anything it is a logical conclusion right we know the difference between logical and conceptual there are certain things which may not look logical to us but they are conceptually true but there are certain things which may look logically correct but they are conceptually not correct so here this one logically it seems that your cd should not have any force otherwise this symmetry will get disturbed now there is a symmetrical diagram and a symmetrical loading anything which is uh, unsymmetrical here is definitely going to disturb the equilibrium if cd is not there it should it looks like this is going to remain in equilibrium everything is symmetric loading and uh, connections everything looks symmetric but it looks like that CD can disturb that equilibrium but let us see let us see whether actually CD is disturbing any equilibrium or not let us try to conceptually prove it let us try to conceptually prove it look let us do one thing 
let us draw this uh, free body diagram at B first, at point number B or uh, at point A. Let's start from point A. Okay. So at E, we have Q by 2 load acting here. At E, we have Q by 2 load acting here or rather let me draw it slightly bigger. We have Q by 2 acting here. Then there is Q by 2 which will be coming in the horizontal direction. Q by 2 will be coming in the horizontal direction transmitted from joint C to joint E, right? And then we can have Fe maybe in any direction like this force in Fe. And then this BE that also is going to be there. Let's say in this direction force in BE, correct? Now suppose in this diagram, I want to take the resultant of Q by 2 and Q by 2. Okay, so the resultant of these two is going to be somewhere here. The resultant of these two is going to be somewhere here, right? Two vectors perpendicular to each other. So at 45 degrees from both of them, the resultant will be existing. So if I replace this joint diagram with this one, then there will be some Q dash, suppose equivalent of both of them coming in this direction. And if I analyze the equilibrium of this joint, then BE and Q dash, they will have a resultant in this direction. Those of you who know, this uh, how do we decide the summation of vectors we have discussed that we'll be quickly able to analyze it right so these two resultant these two vectors force vectors will have a resultant in the downward direction right so if i replace this and this it will have a resultant in the downward direction that ideally should balance fe correct not a problem at all that is how it should work but i am right now i draw this diagram of uh, this blue color diagram only to show you that that's how E can stay at equilibrium, okay? Ultimately, what I'm trying to discuss here is, ultimately what I'm trying to discuss here is that from this diagram, we know that there are two unknowns and two equations we can form. One unknown is FBE, one unknown is FFE. And the equation that we can form is summation of Fx is equal to zero and then summation of Fy is equal to zero, summation Fy is equal to zero. Right. Using these two, we can find out these two unknown values. But let's do one thing before solving it. Let us come to joint B. Okay. And now listen to me very carefully. When we come to joint B here, very carefully, you need to listen to me and observe what I am doing here. If you look at joint B, Q by 2 is definitely acting here. Right. AB is definitely going to act in this direction, FAB. We definitely are going to have FBE here. But what about this Q by 2? Is this Q by 2 directly come and act here? If we consider that CD has some force because we have been shown a member here and right now at this point of time, Conceptually, we have not proved it to be a zero force member. So definitely FCD we are going to consider, right? And if at joint C, if I show you the joint C's diagram at joint C, if I show you this Q by 2, then this Q by 2 will be shared by CD and BE both. Because at C, we have CD also connected, we have CB also connected, at least visually, right? So this Q by 2 entirely will not be transferred to B because what force will transfer to B? Only the force which is transmitted in CB. Whatever force is transmitted in CB that will reach B. But entire Q by 2 will not be transmitted in CB if we consider CD also. Some part will be shared by CD of this downward Q by 2. Some will be coming to CB, right? Here it was not there. Here since there is no force here, no component there. So whatever is the Q by 2 at C fully get, getting transmitted at E also. But here since we have a connection in the same direction, or even if it was having any at any angle also, there would have been a vertical component. So that can help balancing this Q by 2. So entire Q by 2 will not be coming to CB or BC. That is why this force that we have here is not going to be Q by 2. So at joint B, in the downward direction, we are going to have a force which is not equal to Q by 2. The reason I already explained you, entire Q by 2 is not reaching B because some will be shared by CD. Now let me show you something interesting. Let us do one thing. Let us try to find out the force in BE, FBE. Let us try to find out. So if we look at this free body diagram, let's try to do summation of force in horizontal direction as 0. So FBE cos 45 
that's going to act in this direction cos 45 right because this is a right triangle here this is these are equal in length so both of them will be 45 45 each this is also 45 degrees this is also 45 degrees right so if we try to do that if we try to do that what will we get we will get that fbe cos 45 is equal to q by 2 which tells you that fbe is equal to q by 2 cos 45 correct let us do the same thing for joint b for joint b if we talk about joint b here and balance the vertical forces this force along this direction will be fbe cos 45 f b e cos 45 but that is not equal to q by 2 here it was equal to q by 2 but here it is not equal to q by 2 because this force is not q by 2 so the force that f b is expecting to balance is less than q by 2 not q by 2 right now tell me in the same in the same uh, diagram in the same setup in the same body is it possible to have two different forces in a single same member like this is it possible that fbe will have different value if you calculate from b and different value if you calculate from e no they are same member same link you see same link has been extended right they have to have same value you have to bring same value of fbe logically you also think conceptually also think BE cannot have a different value depending upon if you are using E or B. Whatever you choose, at every section, force in BE should have a single value. But here, one value you are getting which is different than the other. Here, it is going to be less than Q by 2. Correct? So, one is saying FBE is less than Q by 2 cos 45. One is saying equal to. What is this scolarity? Why is it coming? Why is this issue happening? This issue is happening because we did not transmit full force here. If this was Q by 2, this sign will become equal to sign. This sign will become equal to sign, equal to sign. And then everything will match. Everything will be balanced, right? So, what do you think we should conclude from here? What should be our next step? Our next step should be to logically see and conceptually see that in the calculation of E, there is nothing wrong. Whatever force C is facing, complete force will be transmitted to E. But in the vertical analysis of point B, there is one assumption that we made that CD will, will contribute something to the force. That is an assumption. Na? CD is not coming and telling you on, your, on his own na, that yeah, I am facing a force or not facing a force. This is something that you are visually concluding. You are looking at CD and you are looking at a force. Uh, you are assuming that okay, it must be having some force. But that is not how 0 force members work. You cannot conclude that yes, GH must be having some force because it is a member shown to us right that's not how we can conclude it we cannot find the answer we have to remain open to a possibility that maybe it does not carry any force because question is specifically asking you now zero force member in this question if cd becomes a zero force member then entire q by 2 will be transferred to b entire q by 2 and the equation that you will get will become this everything will match these both equations are going to match so the only thing that you can do to match both the equations and make the questions and the system consistent is by assuming and by concluding rather not assuming by concluding that CD should be zero force member only then it is possible only then a coherent value is possible in any question FBE single value single force cannot have two different values in this setup right so that is going to be possible only when CD is also a zero force member. That is why this you could have logically concluded also or you can use this concept to draw free body diagram of each and everything and then come to the conclusion that yes FCD is also a zero force member because only then we can have this force as Q by 2 whatever is acting whatever is force Q by 2 we, we are acting here we are applying here entire will transfer to B Q by 2. And then while drawing the free body diagram of joint B, we can say that FBE cos 45 is equal to Q by 2, which is consistent, which is getting confirmed from both the joints. So for this question, this is the reason why CD is also a zero force member. Clearly this question required peace of mind to conclude something. And 
if you try to do, do it in a hurry, anyone, you or me, anyone tries to do it in a hurry, definitely this point will not come to our mind. Different reasons for it. Maybe some of us can skip reading that it is MSQ. Maybe while solving the question, if you just think that it is MCQ, GH is a clear tick and then you will miss reading any other options also. Even if you know it is MSQ, but you forgot and even if you know that this Q will be divided here as Q by 2 and Q by 2. But if you do not draw it in the diagram, it will not, uh, it means there is a chance of error. If you miss writing Q as Q by 2 and Q by 2 and if you try to directly conclude something. So there are many small places where mistake is possible in this question. Clearly it is not a direct or easy, it's a tricky question and it requires you to go beyond the normal processes in order to get to the answer which is CD as well as GH for this question.